Cool. What about you? I am currently single. I have been for about three years now. My first relationship, I've only ever had one boyfriend, and we dated for about two to three years. If you ask him, he might say something different, but we were together for a very long time. And that's Wait, he <laughs> might, what do you mean he might say something different? <laughs> because we broke up with each other, and then he moved on. And I still liked him, but he would still make me feel wanted almost. So it was hard for me to move on for a very long time. So I feel like we were still together, even though we broke up. But on his part, I think he had a new girlfriend, probably five girlfriends. Uh, so you were more so in the relationship than he was? Yes. Okay. And it was two to three years on again, off again, kind of? Yes. How many times was it off and on? I would say about five major times. Five major times? Yeah. What about the minors? Minors? Minor leagues. Maybe like 10, but it was only for like five minutes. And we were like, okay, I love you. Sorry. And so more often than not, who was initiating the off? It was always me because mm -hmm. he would want to text other women in front of me or talk to other women in front of me. I would break up with him every single time, but then I would also be the one to pull us back together. So, so you'd break up with him, but then also reach back out <laughs> to get, yeah. And so was he upfront with you? I mean, you had knowledge of it, so. He was very upfront. If I were to ask him like, are you cheating on me? He would just tell me like, yeah. It would take him a while to get the final answer, but when he finally would tell me, he would tell me exactly what happened and why. I don't want to name his name, but he was adopted, and so he would always give me the same excuse and tell me that, like, he's looking for his mom and a woman, and I would have to deal with that. Yeah, I was dealing with that for a very long time. Looking for his mom and, and multiple women, yeah. it sounds like. And so, okay. So, but I mean, was he upfront with you that he didn't want monogamy? He didn't want commitment? No, he was very much like, you cannot be with anyone else, but I'm going to be with other people. Oh, well, he was upfront about that. Yeah. Okay. And were you with other people? When we would break up. But so if he was upfront with you that he was going to be seeing other girls, was it really cheating? It was cheating because but we he were told in you, a relationship. Right. He, you were in a relationship where he could see other women and you couldn't see other men. It wasn't like I allowed him to. It was just that he was expressing to me what he was doing because I knew that something wasn't right. Well, okay. Did you guys at any point have an actual overt conversation about, hey, this is exclusive. We're not seeing other people. Yes, we had that conversation multiple times. And, but, but, but you said that he said that he was going to be seeing other girls and he wanted you to just be seeing him. around, yeah. It was because he had a lot of personal issues. So he was literally looking for a mother, a mother figure, and any woman that he could be with. So it was like he was holding on to me because he knew that's where his heart lied, but he was also looking for more of himself in other women. I see. <laughs> so, but if you loved him, but if he told you, I, I'm down to see you, but I want this to be like essentially an open relationship. That's more of what it turned into. Like exactly what you said, it did not start off like that. It, it traveled to that more and more. So when it did get to that point, that's when I finally pulled back because he was expressing like, I'm going to be with other people. Right, but you said each time you broke up with him was because he was involved with another woman, despite knowing that he would be involved with other women, you would him. <laughs> I felt like he was the What's only up, person who would love me. Nick? Oh, okay. I felt like he was the only person who would love me, and I am very much attached to someone who I've become comfortable with. It's hard for me to readjust to people, so that's why I would deal with it, because I didn't want to have to readjust to someone else. Right. But I mean, if he kind of set, and I don't, I'm not saying that I agree with the kind of arrangement that he had going on, but if he tells you, I'm going to be seeing other women, and then you break up with him, but then you go back to him without some sort of ultimatum of, you can't do that anymore, just by virtue of you reaching back out to him would seem to indicate to, at least to him, 
that willing to be in a relationship with him despite him seeing other women. <laughs> yes, I was willing to be with him. So it wasn't cheating then. It was. <laughs> right, but if you, okay, so you would have to, there would have to be an establishment that he wouldn't, for you to continue seeing him, he can't see other girls. But you'd go back to him despite his representations to you. I feel like that's the you. establishment when you become in a relationship with someone. When you become in a relationship, you establish that you're only going to be with that person. So I'm trying to like break up with him because he wants to be with other people, but I also love him, so I go back to him and I'm like, we can't do this anymore. He would agree with me. He would be honest to me about what happened, but then he would keep doing it. So it wasn't like... Well, honestly, yes, I do know what I was getting myself into, but I also feel like I was hoping for the best at the same time. I don't think he was cheating. <laughs> I mean, he I told you. It's like, but what do you expect? You break up with him, but then you go back to him, but he's already communicated to you that he's going to be sleeping with other chicks. So by you going back to him, that's essentially you accepting his terms. If he was reaching back out to you, he's like, babe, I'm sorry, let's be together, let's be monogamous, and then he did it, that's one thing. But you going back to him, I imagine it wasn't under, like, there wasn't a ultimatum where, well, you're reaching back out to him, but I'll only get back with you if you're not sleeping with other girls. That was sort of the conversation, but at the same okay. time, I was more focused on being back with him than what he was doing because the type of person I am, being with other people wasn't my main. As long as he was able to be there for me when I needed him and able to understand the things that I couldn't communicate to anyone else, that was the main focus for me. So being able to have a person that I can express those things with was the main focus. So I was mentally draining myself, tuning out the chief and making it seem like it wasn't a big issue when it really was. Okay, we can come back to some of that later. I noticed you have a tattoo here that says the real brat. Oh, real brat. a real brat. My what name is, is Azira, but I am a big brat. I also am very <laughs> real. I'm the realest, the realest in red. I'm not sexy red. I'm the sexiest red. Thank you very much. And so all together, it's a real brat. A real, a real brat. A real brat. I am a real it, brat. What's a fake brat? A is fake, there a fake brat, brat is someone not who, actually a brat, but you pretend to be. A brat is being able to get your way and not putting up with anything else. A fake brat is someone who acts like they're getting their way, but they're not. Wait, I uh, am getting my. And I left it alone, and no, I'm hoping back to, better for the went, future. After a long three, four years, yes, okay. I finally left it alone. And my real bratness in me is not looking for anyone right now, and I feel like that's what makes me a real brat too, because. I'm focused on getting what I want and not letting anyone stop me. All right. And you, how long have you been single? For about two years, I would say. It depends on when you consider that we broke up. So. When's the last time you saw that guy? About two, three weeks ago. <laughs> Wait, so hold on. You said you've been single for two years, <laughs> but you saw this guy as recently as two, two weeks ago? <laughs> two, three. Yeah. Ago. Two, three. <laughs> two, two. And was there was there carnal knowledge involved in this visit? Was there carnal knowledge? What does that mean? Carnal knowledge, sexual intercourse. Oh no. P in the V. No, we have no, not. We actually haven't done anything physical <laughs> since about two years. That's kind of when I consider that we broke up. It was when nothing, I first went to college. Nothing physical. Nothing physical. His mother is like very much a great friend of mine, also like a second mom to me. And so every single time they have a family event or a graduation or his sister recently had a baby, I'm always invited. So I find myself with his family a lot and that's why I've seen him recently. Okay. So before you just, it was a family get together or yeah it was his little brother's graduation from high school wait his little brother's graduation from high school yes and your family is involved your family's involved how or no i'm close friends with his whole family so they oh. invite me to everything that's why i've seen him so recently i see okay 
You didn't hook up two to three weeks ago. No, we very much did it. I wish we did because oh, okay. I really, oh. I love him so much, but he's so upset the way our relationship went and he blames me for everything. So that's why I had to pull myself back because I want to be with someone who sees me as a great person, a great woman, and I feel like he doesn't see me as that because I put up with so many terrible things that he did. He has like a different reputation for me. Now it's just, oh, this girl, she's going to put up with whatever. Like I don't have to treat her with respect, so I really can't ever be with him again. I want to be with him, <laughs> but I can't. It's, it's a principle. It's discipline. We both did, but we didn't. Because Wait, he sees me as someone who he can play with. So I try not to put myself in that situation even though I want to. Okay. And All I right. want to because I've been with him for a very long time and I wouldn't want to restart with someone new. In these instances where he swore... Yeah, well, this is, that's really weird to me, though. Um, if you don't mind me just kind of asking... Why would you be going to events with this guy's family and be having close personal relationships with this guy's family if that wasn't a way in which you can kind of piggyback off of them to get close to him? Usually you would think that if you were in a disastrous relationship where the man and the woman had decided that they just weren't right for each other, that generally they tend to space each other away from each other's families, you know, personal connections, things like this, so that they don't have to see each other anymore. This is really, it's really odd, right? A little strange that uh, you're going to his little brother's graduation, <laughs> right? It is a little weird. Every time before one of his family members' events, I always give myself this pet talk, which is not great. I'm like, you're stupid, you're so dumb, why are you here? You stay away from his family, he doesn't want to be with you. I always tell myself that, but I always end up going because I have like this everlasting faith that he'll finally like treat me right and want to be with me. So you are using the family as a piggyback to get close to this guy. <laughs> like that's, by your own admission, you're piggyback, you're like, you're attaching yourself to his family members so that you can be close in proximity in hopes that he one day has a turnaround and he's like, Finally, you know, Eureka, the light bulb went off. I was brushing my teeth this morning, and uh, ding, there it is. You're the girl of my dreams. I always knew it. Like, is, is that the Eureka you think is coming? Or? Sometimes that is the goal, but other times it's not solely me. I feel like his mother wants me to be with him as well. So I feel like she also does this to help me and him regain a stronger bond. But it's funny because when she and does, uh, wants, does he tell his mama to mind her own business? He does, does he say, "Mom, he mind does. your own fucking business?" Doesn't he? <laughs> he does. Yep, yep, he and does. He does. He says, "Mom, but... I don't give a shit what you say. I've never cared what you said, Mom. I still love you, Mom. I adore you. You're my mom. But mind your own business. That's what he says, isn't it?" Yes, it is. Yeah. I think there's a situation, Andrew, and girl, you got to call me after this, and we're going to work through this together. <laughs> I'll hook you up. Wait, <laughs> yeah, she'll only charge you X amount of dollars, right? I'm just only, I'll just do the call. <laughs> At this point, I'll do it for free. I'm going to need you to get out of this. <laughs> what, I mean, what other advice is there to give but move on? I know. There's no other, there is no other prescriptive thing we can tell you. This guy's, you sit, like, he's going to continue seeing other women. If he was really about you, he would only be about you. So like you're, you're basically, you were, are, will be the side chick. Point blank, period. I'm not saying that to be mean, I'm just trying to give you like a wake up call here. You gotta like, <laughs> you're I still pining to. over this dude. But I'm just confused because you say you've been single for two years, but you're seeing this. Okay, <coughs> uh, we'll move on in this. Move the fool con bro. Thank you, Metro Matt. Appreciate it. Uh, when in the instances where he would allegedly cheat on you, was there any retribution on from your end? As in slashing tires, reputation destruction, anything like that. <laughs> the most I would do is I I am a very much of a not talk to you person, so I would just not talk to him. If I did talk to him, I would constantly scream at him. Like there would be he would not be able to communicate. I would just be standing there screaming at him for hours and then I would cry. 
You would scream at him for hours? <laughs> yes. And he I, wouldn't get a one word in? No. This was a like, multi-hour monologue? Yes. He wouldn't even respond? He'd just sit there playing Call of Duty? Yes. And what, he, sometimes wait, would he be on a video game while you were yelling He would at either him? be on the game or on his phone, or we would be outside in the middle of... Sometimes we would be out places, and he would you'd, talk you'd, to someone, and whoa. I would grab him, make him leave, and I would yell at him the whole way home. You would yell at him in public? Yes. Yikes. <laughs> the whole so, so I gotta, I gotta say to your whoever this mystery man is, sir, <laughs> run away as fast as you can, flee, never look back again. Tell mommy and little brother to stop having relationships with your possibly ex girlfriends who may not have been the girlfriend, but that would be my recommendation. You know, I know, and I know somewhere he's watching this or will be watching this, and he's thinking, man, I've tried everything. I've done everything I could possibly do. She calls my mom on Saturdays, bro. She calls her on Saturday. Yeah. It, yeah. Okay. I recently I just blocked his mother, his brother, his sister, and him because I can't do this anymore. So, yeah. He can't do that shit either. <laughs> Yikes. Wait. Okay. What are you doing? Why are you talking to them? I can't take you nowhere. That's my best friend's party. Come on. I literally am going to have to hear about this tomorrow. Please. No, don't say that. Don't say anything. Please be quiet. No, because you stay cheating. You stay acting like a hoe. I can't take you nowhere. You need to go home. Don't leave me. Where are you going? Come back. What is wrong with you? Stop. I Every single time we go somewhere, we cannot lower, go lower anywhere. Volume. We cannot go anywhere. <laughs> what the? I can't take you anywhere. Please, like, can you please just act like you want to be with me or we do not have to go places. We can deal with this inside, not outside. Busy playing solitaire. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can we put the cuckoo back in the clock here, lady, for just a minute? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know I did. That was, that was rough. That. That, was, that was like yeah. that sounded like you rehearsed this. Yeah, yeah. It happens so it happens so many times where like at that point I would just like go off. I would nonstop like I would lose my voice just screaming at him because there was nothing I could say for him to actually stop what he was doing. So I would just say everything. I have like a random one off scenario question. If, like, a guy came into your life and he was pursuing you and he was a good man and then this guy came back and he was like, no, I want you, which one would you take? Pride. At this point in my life, I'm going to say the new person. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Only because every other moment of my life, I've taken him back and it wasn't worth it. Every single time, it wasn't worth it because he's still couldn't see me as someone who was worth being with and I want someone new who can see me as like a fresh beautiful soul and they don't have all this pent up anger against me or resentment because I let them do things that I shouldn't have and I should have walked away a long time ago. So you said that you blocked this guy's family. Yes. You're not going to go over there anymore? No. <laughs> okay. If yes. you want to call right, him, just call me. I got you. So. Okay. I think we've all been there, though. I'll be honest. Like, the on and off, it takes a minute. And you say the real brat. I think that's when you take your power back, when you start yes. realizing your self-worth and self-respect, and you're just like, I don't want to deal with this shit anymore. So you know you deserve better. But as someone who's been through it, Sometimes it takes a couple of a couple of times for you to realize it, and then your friends have all seen it, and <laughs> you start slowly seeing what they saw, and then you realize that it's time to cut it off. But I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm going to cut through all this bullshit. I'm look. I'm just going to come out and say it. You're not going to like it. She's the abusive one. Yeah, she is. <laughs> she's being abusive. She's, she's for sure has a lot of. You need a lot of healing, my child. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but you, you're telling her you don't no, have I'm to saying, put up with it anymore. No, no, hang no, on, no. hang on, hang on. It's her no, journey. It's not. The fact that she needs to go through, she that has a lot of unhealed trauma for herself, but at the same time, she's not putting up with this. So now you have to focus on yourself. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. If if somebody yelled at me like that, girl, I would have cut you. I would have moved, changed my phone number, blocked you, like left. But it is the it is that resentment. It is that pen up what you're not getting to be frustrated you're both toxic and it just keeps getting yeah. more toxic and toxic because you're letting it happen so he doesn't respect you you don't respect yourself he's not listening to you he's tuning you out and you get more frustrated because you don't feel so it's like literally a toxic thing that just keeps building up until it explodes have, have you guys ever had a physical alter altercation 
<laughs> yes, we have, but it wasn't it wasn't as bad. Plus, oh, wait, you look. physically attacking him, right? <laughs> if I could make a prediction, I believe that I hit him and then he hit mm -hmm. me back. So mm -hmm. I literally started crying. I was like, Oh my god, you hit me! But I was so mad. I did hit him. Yeah, I but was, you can't raise your hand if you don't want to expect to get hit. This happened not many times. I would say three times in the same week to where it was like we were actually fighting. But he was fighting me to a point where he wanted me to stop, and I was fighting him to a point where I was angry. So it was like he wasn't... So he was defending himself. Yeah, he wasn't, like, hurting me or anything. He was genuinely trying to get me He was, me like, holding stop. your arms. Or yeah. So. And in the three times you mentioned, you were the initiator in all of them? Yes. Okay, and what were you slapping him? What were you doing? I slapped him a few times. I would punch him in the back and in the arm. This is so bad, but I was so angry. He would sit on his phone in my room and text other females, people that I used to be <laughs> friends with, people that I would see every day. And I would scream at him like, please don't do that. Get off your phone. He, it was a game for him. He was having so much fun. So I would hit him. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> Like, I was crazy. I don't think he is at fault either because, like Brian said, he was honest with you. He didn't have any consequences because I've been through that where I had an ex. He said he wanted options, and I was like, that's no, no. I'm sorry. Bye. But he didn't have any consequences, so he really didn't care. And he told you what he wanted, which wasn't really you, and it hurts to hear it, but you just kind of like want to force it on him, and then you're just getting frustrated because you're not getting what you want. Or, literally not listening to what he's saying and you're just like but give me what i want and he's like well this is what i'm giving you and you just don't want to accept what he wasn't giving you yeah. all right kumbaya <laughs> can i get a this is also yeah. i mean this is also uh, <laughs> wait you said he's adopted yes I, I feel so bad that i put that out there but it's part of our love story. did you adjust the mic nick yes it's also an l for this guy to actually tolerate this level of disrespect. He's clearly the victim in this whole situation. Hey, can I give a, can I give a counter, though, to this, Brian? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to counter signal you here. Okay. What if it's, you know, it's 11 o'clock at night, and he wants some Arby's, and it's really far away, and it's open 24 hours, you know, seven days away. You know, she can go get the Arby's for him. You know, and and she'll just do it, right? But so, like, for, in his defense, who wants to get up Ladies, at eleven o'clock at night? I'm if they going get to Cabo no, San Lucas in February next year. Would any of you on the panel boat to meet Bucky Larson for six nights in a row if I flew you out to Cabo? Okay, sh I guess show of hands. Anybody here willing to take him up on his? This Bucky Larson wants to fly you guys out to Cabo. Anybody? <laughs> Sorry, Bucky. Sorry, Andrew. Go ahead. Sounds like sex trafficking. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. I, you know, I I understand what you're saying. Kind of an L for him because he's, you know, continuing to kind of lead her on and this kind of thing. You know, I really feel like that that's deviating away from female accountability in this instance. Once you get to the, well, I hang out with his parents and his siblings in order to get closer to him. I feel like he's just kind of stuck at that. But like, what the hell is he gonna do? What's he gonna like? Like you, Later, you keep inserting right? yourself in his life. Say it. What? <laughs> I was trapping him for a certain yeah. amount of time. That's what I wanted as well. And then it just got dreadful. And then I started asking myself, why am I here? Why am I doing this? But at first it was like, oh, yeah, like his mom invited me. Oh, I'm coming. His and adoptive mother? Yes. His Is his mother aware of the nature of your guys's? physically would, violent relationship yes, i would tell her all the time and she would tell me like that he's not ready to be in a relationship and that he needs to like grow a lot more within himself especially with his personal issues and that it's like not right for me to be with him but i would never listen to her so this whole thing's a massive clusterfuck <laughs> the adoptive mother is not advising her adopted son to try to exit a physically abusive relationship. Um, he seems like he's had a hard time. I mean, you're beating him up, <laughs> ingratiating yourself into his family, won't leave him alone. You know, you kind of sound like a pain in the ass, honestly. <laughs> yes, I do. And that's why me and him can't be together because we have so much trauma in our history. But I don't see it like that, which is part of my problem. I see it all as like a long love story, but... 
In conclusion to this whole situation, I feel that when you are not getting what you need or you need to receive in a relationship, you need to remove yourself or else it'll bring something else out of you that is not beautiful and that you don't need to experience. And that's exactly what happened here. Not really, because he tried to remove himself and then you <laughs> inserted you yourself after he tried to remove himself, right? So it's not really what, what happened here. <laughs> Wait, he don't get to remove himself? Is that what you said? Yeah, he does not not get to remove himself until we both feel that that is what needs to happen. He's going to get off a hard day's work and then that's it. The curtain's going to open and that's going to be it for him. He doesn't get hair. to quit, right? He doesn't get to quit me. He's not allowed to. By the way, TTS has been bumped up to back to 200. The whole situation is an absolute mess. <laughs> Are you trolling or is this legit? No, I'm this so serious. Okay. If he were to watch this right now, he would be so happy because you're validating his point. Everything that he says, you are validating. He would be so happy right now. He'd be like, yeah, I told you she's crazy. I am crazy when you drive me to craziness. <laughs> okay, so it's all his fault. This poor, logical, reasonable human being. Is he watching who, this? You, I'll literally who, help who you hang out with his family. This poor, deranged lunatic <laughs> whose family you're hanging out with. I know it's poor, the, you know, poor you, really, poor you. <laughs> I mean, you're honest. Yeah. That's yeah, commendable. She's honest. And she's not that. She's honest. <laughs> At least we can give her that, right? Yeah, honestly psychotic. Uh, I'm not psychotic anymore. I have completely removed myself, and I'm continuing to remove myself every single day. I'm continuing to understand what not being loved correctly does to me. I don't put him at fault. I put myself at fault because... I should have taken removing myself from the situation a very long time ago, and me staying is what brought this monster out of me, and it's not because of him, yeah. it's because of me, and I take full accountability for that, and that's why moving forward, I want to make sure that I know what triggers me and that I don't put myself in those positions, and being not wanted triggers me, so I'm not going to be in any position where I am not wanted. Have you ever damaged any of his property? Yes. <laughs> I just love the honesty, though. Uh, like, like what? He got me... Okay, one time there was a Christmas that had one of the Christmases a few years ago, and I had got him, like, all of these gifts. He used to, like, smoke in his mom's house, so I would buy him, like, candles so that you couldn't smell it. His mom was so mad. But I had pressed him. I was like, why didn't you get me a gift? I don't understand. I don't care if you don't have any money. You could hustle and get me something. I was so upset. And then one day in January, he had this long pole and he gave it to me. And inside of it was this long, big picture of the Vincent Van Sunflower painting. It's like a pot with like all the sunflowers. And a few days later, he took me, we were walking down like a bunch of streets. He's like, we're almost there, we're almost there. I'm like, what are we doing? I bought a picture frame for it on OfferUp and he put it together we put it together it was like almost as big as this table a really big like vincent van gogh picture. and you destroyed it you what destroyed happened he didn't want to see me and this was about like six months later i was like very in a traumatic phase of my life and i really needed him to be there for me but he was out with other girls and with his friends who would take him with other girls and i was very much it upset. was time to wreck that shit it <laughs> was time to wreck that teach him a lesson <laughs> So he needed to be upset. taught a it lesson. Was like watching me, you know? everything that he gave me was watching me. So I was like, okay, whatever. I had some lighter fluid in the back. I Ooh. grabbed the lighter fluid. I walked down the street, like where all the crackheads were. I started smashing the painting. What? I recorded it. This is on Instagram. I retract my free offer. I'm going to need to charge you extra and some liability and insurance. <laughs> I smashed it into pieces in the crackhead alley, and I literally <laughs> lit it up with lighter fluid. I started recording, and I just let it burn. I just sat there, just, like, watched it burn. He had gave me this big stuffed animal monkey, and, like, it just reminded me of him because when we first met, he was, like, kind of fat. So, like, I called him fat. Fat daddy. <laughs> and he had gave me, like, this fat monkey. 
monkey. And so I was like, okay, like, this is him. I did not want the monkey. So, like, I tried to burn it. I ran out of lighter fluid. And there was a dog walking around. I was like, here, doggy, you want a toy? And then the dog took it. He ran off with it. I just, like, said Does he have a car? I gave that to the homeless man who watched me burn his stuff. Charity. Oh, so you gave your stuff away. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And... So, does he have a car? He has a car now. Have you ever when, damaged his co- his car? No. When we were together, he didn't have a car. If he had a car, <laughs> would you have damaged it? I probably would have stolen it before I would have damaged it. Only because in that phase of my life, like everything that was his was ours, and if he wasn't mine, it's what? still mine. So, yeah. Everything that was his was ours. Hours. So if he had a car, it was our car. And if he didn't want me, it was my car. That's why I gave his stuff away. That's why I lit his stuff on fire. You know what's crazy to me about this conversation is if there was a man sitting where you're sitting telling us the exact (laughs) same shit, but like flip the genders, the gravitas of the situation would be like way different like girls are kind of like chuckling she's chuckling she's laughing about it not only if a guy was like revealing all these all these things but he was laughing as he did (laughs) this guy would be like public enemy number one yeah it's just kind of interesting to me how that works um well he'd be on his ninth restraining order you know (laughs) i mean his, his picture would be plastered all over. Don't date this guy because he's a lunatic.com. Right? I mean, he would have everything on planet Earth going against him. But you, it's just like, you know, I burned this guy's shit and handed all of his stuff off to homeless people. I'm nice. I'm a real sweetheart. I very much am a sweetheart. As long as I'm not with him, everything's good because being with him triggered so much of myself that I needed to yeah, learn. Yeah, it's his, it's his fault. <laughs> It's, it's not fault. it's not his fault, it's my fault, but it's also a good thing that it happened. Not for him, of course, but at least for me, because I got to realize these sides of myself that I wouldn't ever want to do again. I can't help it. It's all you. If you didn't bring my fingers wouldn't be bruised right now from decking you so many times. It's you. You did it. Yeah. That's I mean, does that sound reasonable to you? Or does that sound like I'd go to prison? <laughs> I was not 18 yet enough to do real time, so I was kind of in the green zone. So that's why you did it, so you can get away with it. Wait, were you... (laughs) Did you catch case for any of this shit? No. I never got caught for none of this stuff. How old are you? Um, 20. Have any of these behaviors manifested with other men? No. What's crazy is that I think now I'm realizing my karma every single guy that i have like talked to or tried to be with after him have all been psychopaths and all of my friends know if you're out there listening i literally have dealt with psychopaths consistently after this and it's torn me even more to the point where now i don't know how to be in a relationship but now like i'm dealing with people who are doing the same thing to me i actually it's making sense to me now that i have been living out my karma every person that i've talked to after him has been psycho. They have done hurtful things and said hurtful things to me. Anyways, I do have to move it on. 